Welcome to part three of demystifying improvisation on the drum set. In the previous lesson, we learned the down-up method. This was an important melodic strategy. In this lesson, we're going to bring patterns into the down-up method and sort of ride the down-up method toward some of the chops that some of our favorite drummers are playing. This lesson, like I, I've described a few times, that in the beginning, when we reach the first milestone, it's, it's almost cool. It's not quite cool, but it is improvisation. And what happens, starts to happen now that we're sort of down the road with it, is that things start to become cool immediately, but also we have this whole system built underneath it. So we can take cool things, add them, and not only be like playing some cool patterns and it's a fast chop, sure, but we can be improvising, right? Manipulating a melody on the fly with control and understanding with the cool stuff. So that's what we get into today. Today we're going to do what I call the 4-2 down up. And we're basically going to learn to rearrange on the fly a group of four and a group of two. Our group of four is a pattern right, left, left kick. You may have encountered before. It's a really fun one to play. It sounds like this. Our group of two is right, left. That doesn't need demo. And when we start, to improvise with this freely and add a few of the variations that we're going to talk about, it's going to ultimately sound something like this. Let's jump in. We're going to follow a very similar path that I hope is becoming familiar. Uh, and that is, we're going to start with technical exercises where we have a bunch of fours and twos, we rearrange them, we play them exactly as they're written, and then we start to slowly move that process into our head so that we can rearrange the fours and twos on the fly. Our first milestone that we're aiming at is rearranging fours and twos on the fly with no bells and whistles. And with confidence, bet your life on it confidence, that we aren't constantly repeating two or three melodies. This is where the down-up method comes in. So let's rearrange some melodies here. Number one, four, four, two, four. Two, you have all the ingredients. We have the recipe. Let's play this one measure pattern. Right, left, left, kick, right, left, left, kick, right, left, right, left, left, kick, right. Four, four, two, four, two, four, four. Here we go. Now, the down up part of this comes in, and that the right hand melody when we rearrange fours and twos on the fly, ends up being a down-up melody. In this case, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up. That means we're going to be able to leverage the down-up method once we're comfortable rearranging this. We'll work our way there. Let's take a look at number two. If you can, try singing this for me. What's it going to sound like? Just with singing fours and twos. Three and a four and a four. Two, four, two, four, four, two, four. Here we go. Number three. Four, two, four, four, two, four, two, four, four. Next one starts with a two, two, four, four, two, four, two, four, four, also known as down, up, 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 down, down, up, up, here we go. Now, let's look at going over the bar line. So let's take a look at number five. Four, 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 two, four, four, two, four. Here's the bar line pass. Four, 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 two, four, four, two. Four. It happens in the middle of that four. Four, 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 two, four, four, two, four, 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 two, four, four, four. Here we go. Bar 
is always an important step along the process. Take a look at number six. Four, 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 two, four, 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 two, four. Four, 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 two, four, 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 here we go. Right, so like we've seen in, with the down-up method, uh, and like we saw in the first lesson, we would do a lot more exercises than this, right? So you do a lot of training. Again, this builds the technical uh, coordination and the independence. It also builds the melodic fami familiarity, right? You get really good at rearranging fours and twos from the page. And then we take this, we switch into creative practice mode, and we try to create fours and twos on the fly. Now. We're, 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 like I said, we're moving toward that milestone of uh, rearranging fours and twos on the fly. The question you might have is, does that happen all at once? When we do enough exercises, can I suddenly sort of have a light bulb moment and now I can do it? Typically what I uh, recommend my students do instead of rely on that magic moment is you alternate between the written exercises and creative exercises. So you do, right, so let's say the first four examples we just did here, they were one measure long. They all landed on one. So you do those a bunch, right? maybe you're doing that for 20 minutes, and then you take 10 minutes and you switch into creative exercise mode. The creative exercise is one where you're genuinely improvising, but you're keeping the same constraints that you used in the exercise. So in this case, it would just be rearranging fours and twos and trying to keep hitting one. So you go back and forth, you're practicing pulling the fours and twos from your mind instead of from the page. And then you go back and you take the next step on the technical exercises. As you do this, what you do in creative exercise mode, sometimes you realize, hmm, I'm always repeating this one thing, or I'm always stumbling here, or I'm never going over the bar line. And then you can go back to the exercise and go, okay, where in the exercises can I, what can the exercise can help me develop this so that I can go back. And then as that happens, back and forth, you cross the threshold of that milestone and you go, I think I'm actually really uh, feeling really free rearranging fours and twos on the fly here. Let's say we arrive at that milestone. You know how it goes, how we get there. Let's say we're here. So I'm rearranging fours and twos on the fly. I feel really comfortable with that. And I'm still limiting everything to just the tom. Three unit, four unit. Now, we're at the milestone, like we've done before. Phase two is adding variation. This is where the fun begins, and with this subset particularly, it's very fun, because it starts to start sounding cool fast. The first thing I want to think about is what I call the magic two. All it is is that the two becomes accented, and you can orchestrate it where you want. Well, I guess before we do that, let's orchestrate the right hand. Okay, that's the easy part. Okay, the right hand's moving around. Now we've introduced the magic two. We've got this extra accent, so we're going. We can also break those up, so ka ka boom. It's called the magic two because it adds so much variation. If I now, I'm at my milestone, I'm rearranging fours and twos on the fly, and I'm introducing the magic two. Getting carried away, adding steps that we haven't yet taken. Um, next, we can think about an alternate four pattern. So right, left, kick, kick. Okay, so every four that we're playing right, left, left, kick could be right, left, kick, kick. So.
now we have again principle three is appearing here think simple thoughts play complex things I'm just thinking of fours and twos right and I have a couple of these sort of low-hanging fruit variations that I'm tossing in here but the audience is going to receive something that feels way harder than that right and keep in mind each of these variations that we're adding right in for example on my courses on my website each one of those is it's, it's a whole lesson a whole PDF of examples and you're intended to spend a week practicing it right so yes if you just introduce it like this you might be able to do some stuff with it but to really control uh, and, and sort of like master each variation you'd want to actually spend some time so again reminder we're sort of flying through things right now I can't expect I don't expect anyone to necessarily move at this pace but my goal is to show you how this works so we just added right left kick kick will that stay there let's see we just had a right left kick kick tick a boom boom but now if I play every four as right left kick kick look what happens I'm gonna go four four two four two kaka boom boom kaka boom boom kaka kappa kaka boom boom I'm essentially playing this type of common double bass fill Right, so again, like we learned in the previous lesson with the down up method, uh, melodic, sorry, rhythmic vocabulary is the root of all creative drumming because it, it generalizes across drumming domains. So here we have the same thing happening. We have, okay, I mean, ah, we could use this with double kick stuff. But now, the problem when most people get into double kick fills, that's usually their first go to. It feels amazing to go. The problem is almost always that we kind of get stuck with like three patterns and we're not sure what to do with them. But you've learned the down up method now. So you can turn there and go, I actually have a way of improvising with double kick now that gets me out of those ruts and gets me actually creating an unfolding melody that I can control. So if, I, if I'm, again, I'm past milestone one, I can down up all day. Down, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down. I do that with with this right left kick kick And suddenly you unlock a lot more controlled improvisational creativity with double kick. So we're starting to change out patterns. Now let's make a more extreme change with the patterns, right? There are, with the fours and twos, with the right, left, left kick subset, there are a lot more uh, uh, fun uh, variations of patterns that we can add. But again, for the sake of time, I have to kind of cut it somewhere, right? So the course and my website goes way deeper than that. But let's actually totally switch gears and exchange the patterns for triplets. So let's now, instead of a four and a two, we have a six and a three. And they're gonna be sort of like, uh, uh, you know, the four is the six, the two is the three now. The six, let's bring back our six stroke roll from lesson number one in this series. So and as a three, let's just go right, left, left. Substitute all the same exercises. Now we get four, four, two, four. It becomes six, six, three, six, three, six, six, three, six. So now we've got these new patterns, and since we're so good at the down up, we can basically immediately start improvising with them. So now I can down up freely and with these patterns I can and I'll just keep it on the snare and then we'll start adding some obvious variations like the first one's obviously going to want to be orchestration so now I'm going down down up 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 down down And then let's bring in something else from lesson one, the building blocks approach. The alternate three that we used, which was a ghost 
note here. So we're going. So now if I bring in this alternate three, which is a ghost, and I mix that in, believe it or not, everything you're about to hear is just these three elements. Right, so that, if you play the six pattern, and you play a three, that's all ghosted, you end up with this sort of group of nine. That leads to the melody of dotted eighth notes. So now we have this sort of group of nine, this group of six, this group of three, and we can bring in that old like way of just playing threes and playing melodies, so we're just ghosting or accenting. We could even bring in that B pattern. I don't know why I said B, B, this is sounding like B, right? The B pattern that we learned from uh, the six stroke roll where we didn't have the accent on the downbeat. Right, so that's becoming useful again here as we expand. We even bring in the other uh, uh, pattern that we used uh, in the very first example, right, of the building blocks approach, where we had kick right left as a three. So every single thing I'm playing right now is just those ingredients. You have the group of six, the down-up method, adds to the group of three, so you have six, three, down-up. That's our milestone we get past. Then we add variations, we ghost the three. That gives us actually a surprising amount of variety. And then we brought in that alternate six from before, which is just a dynamic variation of the six that we're already playing. So we can keep that in the flow of the six, three, down-up. And then we brought in that other kick right left pattern that we're already good at from doing the building blocks approach. But notice these are all groups of six and three, right? So the, it's all gonna fit into this six three down up framework that we're creating, which is an inherently improvisational one. You have the down up method running on, you know, on autopilot basically. And then we're choosing between patterns as we go. And all of that whole process, including choosing between patterns, becomes progressively more automated. So that even, you know, combining several patterns in a row, you're not really picking the next one actively, right? You get really sort of like, it becomes second nature to think the melodies and the, and the, the, the technical patterns to fill themselves in the more you do this. Um, you're already starting to see that, right? If you're playing the 6-3 down, up. Notice that you can't really pay attention to every note. It's just happening too fast. You're already chunking these things into bigger pieces. And that keeps happening. So you'll think, not only think six stroke roll, and all six notes happen, you'll think, and all, you know, however many notes that requires, happen automatically. So this is what starts to happen over time. You start to ascend up to this place where you're thinking in melodies all the time. And if you're thinking in melodies, then you're relying on a rhythmic vocabulary and you're in a great space for improvisation. So let's recenter. We're doing the down up method. We've brought patterns into it. We're recognizing that the down up method runs through it. This is really important because now what we can do is we can jump between the subsets of patterns. So the 4-2 and the 6-3, these both rely on the down-up. If the tempo's right, now I can keep the down-up method going and swap out the whole set of patterns I'm using, maybe even just for a moment. But for now, let's do it in a very blocky way. Let's start practicing this by saying, okay, one measure of fours and twos, 
one measure of sixes and threes. Better yet, two measures of each. Two measures of fours and twos, two measures of sixes and threes. Shake it to one, two, and the three, and the four, and the. Okay, let's go one measure each. But where it really starts getting cool is where we do this momentarily and randomly. So let me now choose a default. This is a great um, improvising strategy. I've got two subsets. I'm going to define a default. Let's say it's straight time. Now what I'm going to do is sprinkle in the triplet equivalents, right? So I'm going four, two, four, two, four, four, four. I'm improvising. Two, four, four, three, get a four. I put a three in there. Four, two, four, four, three, get a four, four, two, six, I take it to four, four. So I'm defaults four. I'm sprinkling in a substitution of a six for a four or a three for a two. Both of these things are easy for you at this point. You've already developed the four, two, down, up. It's, you can do it and have a conversation. Same with the six, three, down, up. These are easy for you at this point. So flipping the switch is, is a non-event. So here we go, three E and the four E and the... Let's do the opposite. Now my default is triplets, it's the sixes and threes, and I'm going to sprinkle in moments of straight time. So you can think of a sort of continuum of where you have at one side you have pure straight time, on the other side you have pure triplets, and you can imagine yourself sort of moving along that. And this is what we're starting to get um, familiar with, the step of integration. So now we're building these subsets of vocabulary. We don't want to always like, uh, uh, be operating sort of like in isolation with each one. When you see your favorite drummers play, it's all available all the time. And we're starting to get a glimpse at how we, we, we integrate these different bits of vocabulary that we've spent so much time creating. That process is going to keep expanding in a couple of ways. The subsets themselves are going to keep expanding as you add variation. And there's going to be overlap. There's some material that falls into two. These are great pivot points. And then also, you're going to have so many subsets to choose from, and you're going to be so fluid at moving between them that, again, think simple thoughts, play complex things. You're going to be thinking, oh, I've got these couple subsets. I'm going to switch to this one. Flip the switch back to this one. Stay here. Your audience is going to be receiving a wild, totally impossible to decipher amount of variation. But that makes sense musically because, in this case at least, there's this underlying continuity of the melody. The melodic strategy is remaining the same. We've got our melodic strategy constant. We're moving between subsets underneath that. What we're starting to get a glimpse at is integration, uh, right? So we've got these separate bubbles of vocabulary where we can improvise within them. And we're going to slowly start to see uh, that they expand and sort of overlap with each other in certain ways. But then when we start moving between them, Right? We're going to really see the value of this, this principle of think simple thoughts, play complex things. You're going to start, for you, each of them are easy. And all you're really deciding is to flip the switch because they've become automated within each of their bubbles. The audience is receiving an unbelievable amount of variation. Right? And we're not even really talking about creative tools yet. Right? We're not really talking about like adding space and rests and turning things off. Right? That's 
sort of the next level of creative thinking here. We're just working on building the core vocabulary in an improvisational way. But in integration is something that we're going to talk about at greater length in the final lesson. This is it for the down-up method for now. But I want to reiterate that we've just done a couple subsets with a couple different patterns. The down-up method, what continues to amaze me about it, is that it keeps appearing and it keeps being useful everywhere. Right? Like I said, it's kind of a rite of passage for students on my website because once they learn it, they encounter it everywhere, right? in places that you might not expect. For example, in the drum and bass course that I have on my website, think about how the, the down-up method helps you immediately improvise with drum and bass groups. If I, if I play a drum and bass, a drum and bass 101 groove. Down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up. Drum and bass, one of the characteristic traits of drum and bass is taking uh, three or four uh, 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 downbeats in a row and shifting them to the upbeat. Right, so if I go doom ka to ka boom boom ka to boom ka boom boom ka ka boom ba down up 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 down down go down up to get If I remove all the fancy stuff in there it ends up being Right, so it's driving there. There are also triplet versions of these. Down, down, up, oh, down. The swung down, up version. One of my favorite teaching tools that I've ever come up with is the three over two down, up. Three into four into da, down, da, 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 and da, da. It helps you create these sort of bembe style patterns. And then, one of my favorite things, one of my favorite courses on, on the website is this type of groove. You, you might have heard you know, people do this type of thing, right? This is based on inverted doubles. Of course, I, I have called the inverted doubles in flow grooves course. But what's happening here is only one note different than the right, left, left kick stuff we already learned. Right, so right, left, left kick in this fours and twos. If you, instead of go right, left, left kick, you go right, left, left, right. The two is still right, left. Four twoing, four to four to four two, to four, four to two, four, four to two, four. To two, four. I put on the hi-hat. I figure out how to put a backbeat in there. What you find is if you've done the right, left, left kick subset with fours and twos, when you switch into inverted doubles, uh, suddenly you can almost immediately not only play some cool beats, but improvise with this type of groove. Right? This is why, again, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, but rhythmic vocabulary is the core of all creative drumming because you keep transcending uh, uh, the, you keep transferring to different areas of drumming and you keep being able to use it to improvise with new patterns. I think of a student on my website named Brian, who's only been playing the drums for two and a half years or so. He's been on my site for about a year and a half. He has devoured almost every course. Guy has a full-time day job, but he's really uh, uh, disciplined about his practice. And he has some, uh, he has one of the most uh, uh, expansive vocabularies for improvising that I've seen of any of my students. He's only been playing two and a half years, and this guy can play the drums. He can express himself and play a solo on the drums with a huge variety of vocabulary. And this is really why, right? Because he spent time with the core melodic strategies so that when he arrives somewhere new, he's already done 
sometimes 75% of the work. It's just a matter of learning a couple of new patterns and plugging them into a system that you already know. And voila, you've just added this whole new area to your vocabulary. That's it for the down up method for now. In the next lesson, we're going to learn another one of my favorite, very different melodic strategies called the stutter and extend approach. Thanks for watching. See you there.